All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Addison Watson with Media Beacon, and with me today I have Justin Williams. And thank you so much for attending the Media Beacon Adobe Connector, a uh, day in the life of a content creator. Um, we'll be going through and sharing basically all the, the new things on 2019.1 with the Adobe Connector, along with some standard use cases that we've seen from some of you and other places within the industry. Um, as we move through today, uh, please feel free and address any questions into the chat in the WebEx. Um, I'll be keeping a watch on those as Justin goes through, and we'll try and answer those either at the end or in line, depending on the type of question. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce Justin Williams, our technical trainer, and we'll get started off. Thanks very much, Addison. Uh, today, I'd like to go over some, uh, just sort of the basic points of uh, what the Adobe Connector is, and then we're going to talk about how it works in uh, different contexts. So, and the Adobe Connector is going to appear uh, as though it's a, 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 just a regular plugin or an extension, as they're now called, for InDesign, um, as well as uh, Photoshop and Illustrator. We'll be taking a look at InDesign primarily, but we'll touch on the other two as we go. So, uh, uh, the Media Beacon Connector will show up as a panel over here. And uh, first thing we have to do is we're going to log into um, uh, my Media Beacon instance. Um, using the connector. So I'll type in the URL here, I've already done that, and then I will be able to log in. All right, and uh, once I've got logged in, um, it's going to display uh, a, a list of assets. This is very similar to uh, the Media Beacon's uh, infinite scroll uh, uh, view element. But uh, we have uh, some features that are inside of Media Beacon, um, but it's a reduced feature set. Um, I'll just go through some of the basics here. Um, this uh, little menu right here shows us a uh, allows us to see directories that uh, are available to the uh, particular ACL that I'm using. I'm in my global admin ACL. And I can see all the folders that I have access to, and I can filter by them if I wish to. Uh, I also have saved selections and saved searches. I don't have any saved searches right now. But uh, any of these that I have saved, um, I'm able to uh, bring those up in the, inside the connector. I also have a, a somewhat limited um, uh, quick search. So if I want to search for uh, a given element by, uh, if an asset by string, I can do that very easy. And I also have a, uh, a slightly, uh, it's kind of halfway between research and halfway between um, our regular advanced search. Uh, you can choose a field to search on and then you can enter a value. Um, one thing that's a little bit different than Media Beacon as a standard, uh, uh, standard functionality, it will give you a list of pre-existing values that you can choose here. So anything that you can pull down off of this menu you know, you know already exists. Um, inside the dam. You don't have to just do a plain free text. So uh, some, some, some basic and useful uh, items for doing uh, uh, just basic image searches. Um, and uh, that's how you can locate things inside, uh, inside Media Beacon to use inside of InDesign. Um, and one of the primary use cases that we have is using InDesign uh, I'm sorry, using Media Beacon uh, through the Adobe Connector as a library and creation tool for Adobe applications, especially uh, um, InDesign and Illustrator that can use placed files or f links. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and make one of those now. And uh, one of my favorite use cases is to make um, very bad album covers. And uh, I'll show you how, how we would go about doing that. So. Um, let's make uh, let's make something with animals today, and uh, I'm going to uh, show you how I can place images directly into uh, InDesign, and I won't uh, I won't have to download them. It automatically occurs in the background, and uh, you don't really have to worry about uh, managing uh, the links. So. Um, uh, something that I'll, uh, uh, you'll see is that uh, I can click on a particular asset, and I'll choose, I'll choose this one. And you can see that it flashes there, 
And uh, when I bring the cursor over to the design area of InDesign, you can see that my cursor is loaded. So InDesign is aware that it has an asset to be placed. And I'll just place it in this pre-existing um, uh, element right here. And it gets dropped right in there automatically. And if we take a look over on the links panel, we can see that, in fact, it has a real path um, inside my, my, my computer. Now, these are fairly small images, and I'm quite close to the server, so this happens very quickly. But uh, I'm just going to quickly show you that there is a cache area in, uh, that's uh, uh, on, your, on your local machine that the asset automatically gets downloaded to. So uh, you, you don't have to do any downloading. It just automatically happens. And uh, uh, we'll see this a little bit later, but what's going on is uh, first a thumbnail is downloaded that's very small, and then the full asset is brought over. Now, my image is only 60K, so it happens almost instantaneously for both. But uh, when you have larger images, um, I'll show you some uh, extra functionality for uh, low connection speeds and things like that. So let's fill out the rest of our, uh, our little album cover here. And I'm going to select uh, multiple assets at once. So I'm going to click on this echidna, on this dog, and on this cat. And you can see that they all highlight. And uh, oh, I accidentally double clicked them. Um, but you can see it might be as small on your screen, but you can see that there is a little icon that says six. And that's just Adobe's standard functionality to let you know that there are six images loaded. Now, I can place these um, either uh, in a pre-existing uh, frame or I can drag a frame out. In this case, I, I don't need it because it was extra. And I can get rid of that. There we go. And I can, of course, do all the, the nice uh, um, adjustments that I can do with InDesign. And we'll just add some really basic text so that we know that we have an album cover here. Something that we can see. And maybe not Minion Pro, that's pretty, pretty entry level. All right, there we go. So not a good album cover, but that's my specialty. So uh, now that we've made our um, local InDesign file, uh, it's still in an unsaved state. It, it does not exist inside of MediaBeacon yet. Um, but the next thing I'll show you is how we um, bring that asset uh, into MediaBeacon. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save it locally. And this is just a little temporary spot, so I'll call this Carnival. And uh, it is now currently saved. And you can see that the connector panel now shows a button called Upload. And this is going to allow us to um, uh, not only move this file into uh, that uh, cached area, but it also uploads it to Media Beacon and synchronizes it with the DAM. So I'll click on Upload. And you'll notice that the file flickered. This has now been copied into that cache area, and uh, it has been just uploaded to Media Beacon. So let's take a look at uh, that asset inside of Media Beacon. So it's already uh, been uploaded here, and uh, of course, one of the things that we can do is see those assets in the system. And these are not duplicated. These are the only copies I have of these assets. So I can very easily find them. So in this way, I can um, uh, automatically upload a, uh, a layout and uh, associate the assets. And I don't have to re-upload those assets or do any management. It's already taken care of uh, for us. So um, uh, uh, just... Uh, we'll, we'll just touch on a couple of the, the basic media beacon things that we can do with this document report. This is going to show up for both InDesigns and uh, Illustrator files that have placed images. 
and I can uh, click on the select all button. It will bring up not only the InDesign itself, but its constituent images. Um, whoops. I can also uh, go to an individual image and see that um, this has been this particular asset is it the media beacon knows that it is has been used inside this InDesign file. So we can bidirectionally figure out what is used in what. And one image can be used in multiple different um, InDesigns. And likewise, um, InDesigns, of course, can use multiple different files. Um, so that's sort of the basic uh, use case that we have. Um, the next, of course, is uh, whenever you create something, um, and I have worked in the industry and, and know this, uh, obviously there's times when uh, there's going to need to be changes to any given uh, file. So uh, to prevent uploading several uh, assets over and over again that are the same thing, um, we're going to make use of this upload new version functionality. But let me make a change to this layout just a little bit so we can visually see that there's, uh, there's going to be a difference. And we'll just make some fairly obvious change here. We might as well center this. And we can throw on a nifty little effect. So there we go. And now that I've gone and made those changes, it's still in a locally unsaved state right here. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now it's been saved. And I'll click on Upload No Version. And this is going to show us a little progress bar, and the up new version is being uploaded. Uh, back in Media Beacon, oops, did I close it? I did. Uh, we can see that it already has been uploaded. And of course, we haven't changed. There's not two assets here. Um, what's going on is we're using our managed versions functionality. So I currently have two versions, the one that's on the top of what we could call the, uh, the versioning stack and the original one that was uploaded here. So every time I use that upload new version functionality, I'll get another entry. And I can always go back and uh, if I want to look at this previous version, it's still a real asset in the system. You can't normally get to it, um, but uh, you're able to uh, see that original uh, asset as it was. So this helps you to control your versioning and uh, not have to manage uh, lots of different uh, iterations of the same file by file name, which is what I had to do back in the day when I worked in prepress, which was uh, not a lot of fun. All right, so that's our, uh, how we handle uh, iterative uploads of a, uh, the, same, the same document. And uh, uh, something that I, uh, the next kind of use case I want to talk about is uh, editing an old layout, something that I didn't create just now. So let's take a look at that. And uh, what should we take a look at? So I'll close this one, and I'm going to look for some InDesign files, INDD. And uh, let's open up this asset. And you can see it's downloading in the background right here. And it tells me that there are eight links um, that are missing. And that's just because they're not local to Media Beacon, or lo they're not local to this machine. So I'm going to hit OK. And uh, what Media Beacon uh, Connector is going to do, it knows, this is a, a window that comes from the connector, it knows that there are these assets. And it's asking me, do I want to download these to the local machine? I don't have to, um, but I can do that. So I'll select all, and I'm going to hit update. And now those are going to um, be brought into my, my cache. So as you can see, I've got... Uh, a bunch of these assets 
in there. So all the uh, uh, links that are part of this particular um, uh, layout are, are, now, are now added. Um, now, a user does not have to go in and mess with this. This is all managed in the background. So uh, you don't, I, I'm just showing you where stuff lives, but a user would not have to go back here and manipulate things typically. So looks like we need to update a font. So we'll make a, we're going to do that and we're going to uh, update our document. And I know which one that is. And it's this one right here. So let's go with, whoops. We'll go with, we'll go with Gaudi. And we're going to go ahead and make a PDF proof. And that uh, PDF is going to be automatically uploaded into Media Beacon as a separate asset. And it happens automatically once I click Export PDF. And that will uh, process and we'll see that on the back end. All right, there we go. All right, so once that has occurred. We should be able to see that back in Media Beacon. All right, and it showed up and it is currently processing its preview right now. So in a few seconds we'll see, there we go, our PDF. So there we go. We can see the, uh, the newer font that we had added in. So now this can be sent uh, to uh, any given um, uh, users inside of Media Beacon or could be emailed out to uh, someone who's not uh, a Media Beacon user for the purposes of proofing. All right, so uh, that's um, sort of our uh, basic how we can do proofs and things like that. Um, the next thing I'd like to show you is how we can work with multiple Adobe applications um, at once. Um, obviously, it's not as though I'm just consuming uh, uh, various images and drop them in InDesign, I need to create things and to edit things. So uh, we're going to talk about Illustrator and InDesign. So uh, let's start of a new document and uh, I'm going to uh, create my layout and then I'm going to make some images um, that I'm going to be using. So I'll just use a little template I've got here. Oh. And initially I'm going to just place a few images. All right, let's see. Oh, actually, uh, I'm going to I'm I'm going to uh, change gears a little bit. I'm going to show you um, a workflow, uh, or rather a use case, if uh, I am not initially using thing uh, uh, assets inside of Media Beacon to make my design. They're things that I've created locally on my own machine. Um, so um, I've, I, have, I have a couple images um, already prepared. Uh, in this case, a baboon. So We'll modify this just a little bit. Oops. And my InDesign skills are a little rusty, but I think we'll get there. So we've just got an image there, and I want to bring in another asset. Oops. Not what I wanted to do. maybe a little bit too big on our baboon. Okay, there we go. Not too bad. And one last thing, we'll bring in this one. Yeah. 
and not looking too shabby. But now we're going to need um, uh, some some text. Some, for example, some curve text. We're doing, say, a, a, liter a summer literacy program, something like that. So to do something like that, I would probably go ahead and use Illustrator. So I'll open that one up, and we're going to make something very simple. It doesn't need to be complex at all for our purposes, but of course it certainly can be if that's your your use case. And we're going to make very simple styled text here. Oops, if I could remember how to use the right tools in Illustrator. First time I ever used uh, Illustrator was um, in, it wasn't in 1998, but it was version 1998. So it's, I've been using it for a while. I think it's pretty good. All right, so we need to find a cool font. What's a cool font? There we go. Bring that up a little bit. Less big than that. There we go. And I'm going to save that to my temp area because what I'm going to do is upload this to Media Beacon. And although I just created it, I'm going to place it via the connector. So I'll just go and put stuff in my temporary area here. Reading this cool logo. So very much um, the uh, the same way that we've got um, in design as a uh, uh, where is it? You can find it like this. Extensions media beacon. And uh, it shows up as a panel. Um, it, initially, when you add this, uh, the panel to any given of the Adobe apps, it'll float around. Um, you don't have to have it uh, be floating. You can uh, snap it over to um, one of the, uh, the areas over here if you, if you prefer that. So uh, I hadn't uploaded it to me to be, I just saved it locally. And now I'll just click Upload to do that. And now that's uploaded, and it's just previewing right now. I can jump back over to InDesign, and we have our other item right here. And again, I'm just going to go uh, drag and drop or placement, and there we go. I've got a pretty simple design here. And this is just a little bit too big. All right. So, still only one asset of this uh, uh, of the layout, and the three other uh, uh, items have been uh, modified. Um, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we'll call this summer reading. going to go ahead and upload that. And what's really nice um, about the way that the connector functions, it uh, is aware when an asset is not inside of Media Beacon. So what's going to happen is I'm going to upload this summer reading uh, InDesign document, and it's also going to find the picture of the baboon, the sunglasses, and the book. They're going to all be uploaded at the same time. So. I should be able to once I, so we have all those constituent assets already uploaded. This one had been done directly, um, but uh, they all get uh, automatically updated. And uh, so this means there's a whole lot less uh, running around trying to find assets and put them in one spot to be uploaded. Media Beacon is aware of it. Say my art director stops by and says, 
that's a pretty cool layout you've got there, but that book should be read. And I'm like, okay, that book could be read. Um, there's a couple ways that we can do this. Traditionally, most in design or just Adobe users would you know, do something like right click and go to edit original. Now that certainly will work, but uh, we don't want to create a secondary copy or download it or anything like that. Um, so we can do this uh, that way, but I'll show you how we can do this directly through the connector inside of Photoshop. I can just open this up in Photoshop, and I don't have to download it again because it's already on my local disk, and I can make uh, some edits to this if I want. So I'll just double click that to open it. And because this is Photoshop and this is a native document, um, it's gonna open up for editing. So I've got my, uh, uh, my asset here, and I wanna change the color. So let's go ahead and alter that to have it be, uh, where's a, a more of a red, so bit more saturated red there. So I'm going to go ahead and save that locally. And then just as I was doing in InDesign, um, instead of saving as new copy, I'm going to upload a new version. And this is going to take a little bit longer because this is a mm, this is a slightly larger file. But the same thing is going on. Uh, you can see the progress bar. Back in Media Beacon, and we can see it's now a red book. Previous version was blue. So uh, that is how we can work with multiple uh, Adobe applications at once and um, uh, how we can use those uh, applications in tandem. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you was how low resolution mode works. And this is to address uh, times when you have very large images, but you don't really want to have to wait uh, for how long they take to, to actually load. So I have a uh, moderately large, not ridiculously sized uh, image here. Um, it's about 75 meg. And uh, if I was to place this normally, um, we would see uh, a fairly exaggerated uh, load time. And I can use this to show you um, the uh, the, the speed difference between the thumbnail downloading and uh, when we actually get the full asset. So I'm going to click on that to load it. And in the background, you can see that uh, oh, where did it go? Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I seem to have lost where that went to. But in any case, uh, uh, what's going on uh, in the background is uh, it's going to download an asset that is, has the same name but has a thumbnail appended to it, and that's just its placeholder. So I technically haven't placed this yet, so it just loaded the thumbnail. Uh, once I actually do place it on the page, Media Beacon will start loading the original, and that's going to occur in the background. Now it happened pretty fast, but uh, and you may not be able to see on the on the uh, WebEx, but the preview in InDesign just sharpened up, so um, you don't have to um, uh, reconnect those. There may be times though that you want to do that, um, especially if you're in a low bandwidth area um, or uh, you, you are just wanting to. Uh, uh, make a layout without downloading the full images. To do that, I have to turn on something called low uh, resolution mode. And to show that off, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear my cached assets. So everything that I've saved here, I'm going to get rid of. And that gets rid of um, all the assets that I have cached there. So when I uh, click to place this asset again, it's going to be to my particular uh, computer. It's going to make the first time. So I'll turn on low resolution mode and you can see really what's going to happen. Again, I'll grab that asset and in the background we've got the thumbnail 
and I can go ahead and place that inside my InDesign, but it does not automatically change. It's going to say stay and sit as the thumbnail. And um, I can uh, go ahead, save this uh, document. I can bring it back into uh, uh, to Media Beacon, and that link is still established, even though I never downloaded the full resolution asset. Um, when you're in a situation where you do have um, assets that have a thumbnail uh, created by uh, the connector, I'll get an up res button and this is the trigger to go ahead and download that original. It automatically changes it out on the file system and also changes it out in the links panel so there's no uh, extra action needs to be taken. And we just are given the option to update one or more. If there's multiples here that need to be updated, I don't have to do them all. I could just do one if I want to. And it will start downloading in the background. And you can see the progress right here inside the connector. So um, that's going to take a little while, but uh, that was kind of my last uh, use case that I have. Uh, there's a couple of things that um, I wanted to have Media, uh, uh, Addison speak to. Um, so uh, I'll give him control if uh, he is ready to take over. Awesome. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. So really what we've gone through so far is kind of what we look at from a Media Beacon perspective is kind of the traditional approach to working with creative content. Basically working from the library section of Media Beacon to go through, get new content created, get into the system in a, a logical structure. Um, now there is one other element to the Adobe Connector um, that we wanted to make sure that we shared that is a part of Media Beacon's BPM offering. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that, um, that is Media Beacon's business process management uh, solution, basically running around uh, doing project management, doing task management, uh, review and approval. Now, we're not going to cover all of that today, um, but we did want to touch on the elements where really Media Beacon comes in and allows a user within the Adobe Connector to actually speak to and sort of integrate directly with the task management portion. So give me one second here as I switch out users and log in as myself, and we'll take a look at that. So I'm going to uh, another server here, basically, of course, still same user management, you know, logging in with the correct ID. We'll see if I get my password right. All right, and you can see with mine, there's actually a, a slight difference um, between what uh, is actually within sort of, you know, Justin's setup when he had, so basically without BPM there and available, and what's available within mine. And honestly, the, the main piece of that is gonna be the task portion. So what I'm gonna go through and do is just generate a, a new document. Um, and for anybody who enjoyed sort of Justin's uh, usage of InDesign, you're about to see a very novice user start to do this. Um, so I'm gonna find just some, some files. We'll, we'll get some files of puppies. Do the same sort of things that we were doing from a placement, from a linking methodology. Um, really just getting all of these sort of in to our layout. Now at this point, still gonna go through, save the file locally. And we'll call it something, you know, unique. My puppy's layout. And at this point, we're not going to go through and upload basically directly into the library of Media Beacon. Instead, what I have is basically a, a set of tasks that have been assigned to me. Now, within these, they, they could have been asking for an InDesign layout, could have been asking for a, a web banner, could be asking for retouching, really across any of the three applications that we utilize from Adobe, though. Um, the interaction is going to be very similar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically upload a PDF that I'm going to route for approval. So I've uploaded it, but I also want to make sure that I'm going to go through and do things like completing my task within the tool. So uploading that PDF in, um, and I know we've got a question that we'll want to cover sort of the ability or ways that we can sort of change that, you know, resolution or quality of it. Um, but as we basically go through and upload that, give me a second while my, my tasks reload here. We're going to want to go through and basically complete that task. That's kind of the trigger within that tool to say that we're done, taking it out of the queue, and sort of moving on to the, the next steps within the tool. So I'll go ahead and pull up a, a view of Media Beacon here that shows kind of the next step that happens directly after we get that file uploaded 
and make that available within the tool. So I've got my other Chrome tab up here. You can see a couple other puppy layouts that I've done. You can see sort of the tasks that are available for me within the web as well. But the main element is kind of, I've uploaded that file in for approval. Now within Media Beacon, um, we're basically able to go through and use what we refer to as the viewer within BPM to provide additional comments, annotations, feedback on the file to make sure that we've got everything on it that needs to be there for the final piece. So, you know, maybe I've got a, a piece here where there should be a puppy here. I can save that on. We'll see a full list of annotations as we go through here as well. Um, any of the users who have been assigned that task can come in and reply um, directly to the annotation um, or go through and just have general overall discussions within the tool as well. Um, but really kind of the, the main piece here is that, you know, if, if I'm going to have, you know, comments or annotations, I'm generally going to reject that. That can kick off further tasks, further workflows to go through and, you know, source those uh, comments down to end users, have them upload new versions of the file, and, and sort of run through a very structured approval process that we see as part of the, the Media Beacon BPM solution. Um, for anyone interested in sort of a, a more in-depth view of BPM, of how we approach that, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to any of the staff that you know here at Media Beacon, especially your account management team, and we're happy to set up further demos of that or further elements of uh, just sort of the Adobe Connector overall. So with that, we've got about 13 minutes left here. We did want to pause and take some time for questions. Um, Justin, I know I have one that came in the chat that Ooh. you might be able to help out with. Sure. Um, we did have a question around sort of back when we were uploading PDF uh, versions of the files in. There were some questions around sort of what quality that is, sort of how they're generated, and if there are any configurable options around sort of what that sort of PDF upload should oh, sure. be. Uh, the uh, of course, InDesign has various different presets that um, PDFs can be made with. Um, currently, it is uh, set to, I believe, press quality. Uh, we do not yet have a way to alter that. That's something that we're, we're looking at as, as an improvement to the, uh, to the connector. But right now, it's, uh, it's done as press quality, I believe. All right. Uh, you can speak up in either the uh, text chat or you can unmute yourself and uh, ask in voice chat if you have any questions. Um, but uh, certainly we'll take any questions you've got right now. Okay, a couple of the questions here. Um, is there a way to save to a targeted directory folder? And that's one that I, I think we, we went through a little bit here. So kind of the, the common structure is to go through and upload basically, if you're working on a new file, that's going to put that into a, a targeted sort of auto-generated upload folder, um, very similar to the, the methodology that we actually use in Media Beacon when you don't set a target directory. Um, within that, one of the extensions we are looking at are sort of enhancements to the, the Media Beacon sort of usage is being able to sort of pick your own target directory for where a file should be uploaded to. And within that, whenever you sort of see placed files or files that you're working with within that cache folder, you will see that representation of basically what the structure will be um, when it is uploaded. And Justin's going to pull up here sort of that same path within, uh, within Media Beacon to show that those are really the same. So very standard, just kind of upload uh, Justin Root, obviously his username, and then sort of that time and date. Uh, that lets you know sort of when that file came in. Uh, thanks for jumping in there. Uh, you, you've got that figured out. Um, very good. Um, all right. I think the, the others in here, I've been, I've been chatting back and forth through most of it. Yep, okay. Um, we may give it just a, a moment here. If anybody does have any questions, feel free, jump in, let us know. Otherwise, we'll, uh, oh, we'll there, close it out here. Uh, Denise had div, did have one. Oh, I missed is, one. Is the temporary folder one you created on your desktop, or is it located elsewhere? Uh, that temporary folder is just one that I made on my desktop. Uh, the behavior of um, the connector in uh, any of the three different uh, Adobe applications is um, before we upload it, um, we have to save it to the local disk. Once that's done, um, it gets uploaded to this cache area. At that point, um, and it may have been hard for you to see in the WebEx, uh, the document closes quickly, then reopens the other copy that's in the cached area. So all I really need 
this temporary new files uh, folder is just a place to save stuff before I s uh, save it into Media Beacon, and then the copies that I'm actually working with are inside the cache. So this is something else that we're we're looking at uh, uh, ways ways to enhance what are what are people's needs and wants around that. Just as a convention for me, I just use something that I call temporary new files. Once something has been uh, saved here, I don't need it. Uh, the updated copy is the one in the cache and the one in Media Beacon. So that's uh, that's just how I use I use it. Okay, and doesn't look like we've had uh, anything new come in via the chat. Um, we'll give you one one last shot here. If you do want to speak up and ask anything, please let us know. Otherwise, thank you all very much uh, for attending Media Beacon's overview of the Adobe Connector. Um, as you do have any follow-up questions, uh, either myself or Justin um, absolutely can be reached out to to follow up or our account management staff here at Media Beacon. I think we'll end it there. Everyone have a happy Friday and a great weekend. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody.